something from another, and I'll share a little bit about that. One of my favorite words, and one of the words I overuse the most these days, is multimodal. Multimodal, multiple modalities of transit, multiple modalities of meeting. I would disagree with Larry a bit that people do learn in a lot of different environments, and to John's uh, comments uh, during the, the Q&A, but multimodal transit, multimodal capabilities in terms of communication. We live in a multimodal world. And finally, smart growth, smart transit, sustainable development policies, all of these are emerging as leading practices within our cities, both in the US and in the emerging markets. Um, I was born in Seattle, so this is one of my favorite slides of Cascadia, a mega region. Seattle, Vancouver, and Portland, Oregon. Um, the densities you see here are leading practice densities where you have strong urban cores. City of Portland has a 40-year plan around transit. City of Seattle teaches other cities around the world in terms of sustainable policy. City of Vancouver post-Olympics is rated number one city across five different uh, criteria ratings and ranking systems around the world. So Cascadia as a mega region is doing a lot of things right. And those of us in New York and Boston and Chicago and Washington and Florida can learn from the practices of Cascadia. This is the European Union's uh, matrix for eco city uh, growth and development. And if you look at all, again, these criteria, a lot of focus upon human scale, renewable energy, walkability, new urbanist policies and platforms. And actually, New York City, for those of you who don't know this, is probably the greenest city in the country on a per capita basis, given our transit and low carbon footprint per, per capita. Uh, the Europeans and the Australians are very much ahead of us in terms of this type of criteria. But as we see climate change and the cost of climate change continue to accelerate, we believe this type of criteria will become more of a norm for this country and elsewhere in the emerging markets as cities grow and urbanization continues. So, so let's talk a little about technology and, and why, how are cities becoming smart? Um, this again is another listing of urban innovation, intelligent smart energy systems. As technology is advancing, cities are becoming smarter. We as people are becoming smarter. And the word smart is, is in reference to intelligence. Cities are knowing what their citizens are doing. Our smartphones tell us where we are, where others are, near field communication devices. All of this is creating a web of knowledge for cities. We will have billions of mobile internet devices in the next five to 20 years. Um, another very interesting um, element is the consumerization of IT, which, you know, to the earlier point that, that Dan made, no one could predict that the iPhone would have such an impact on the consumer behaviors that then influence the work behaviors. See, traditionally, we were all tied to the mothership of our corporate technologies. But what's happening today is our consumer technologies are beginning to move ahead of the corporate mothership technologies. Again, multimodal, multiple modalities of technology, uh, engagement, communication, collaboration. Um, video telephony, 3D telepresence, holograms will be here in two to three years. Predictive analytics, um, tremendous power in looking ahead with analytical capabilities. Cloud computing, I'll talk a little bit about as to what that means. Distributed work. Work is being done around the world in packets and distributed on 24-7 basis. Artificial intel intelligence, IBM Watson, uh, the folks at IBM we're working with, you will soon be able to walk up to a screen and give that screen your medical issues, and the screen will talk back to you and tell you what your options are in terms of the diagnosis. And if the screen doesn't know, the screen will use Cisco telepresence to connect to a series of doctors who will know the answer. And this technology, in terms of revolutionizing healthcare, will not only reduce cost, but increase uh, effectiveness. Autonomic computing, quantum computing, advanced computing systems, and then finally, bionic computing and workplace robotics. Fujitsu and Mitsubishi now have $400,000 robots that can do basic administrative and operational tasks. There was also a young man last week at Berkeley who was a paraplegic for four years in a terrible car accident. And he walked across the stage to accept his diploma at Berkeley through an ectoskeletal 
um, robotic capability that may relieve paralysis. I have another friend in the UK who's basically blind, who's on a wait list for a retinal digital transplant that will be available in 2014 that will relieve blindness. These technologies are really powerful and what's ahead it can have huge effects on humanity and how we live and work. On the corporate side, going digital is the future. Um, digitization, anybody's interface with iTunes, digital music, it supports business intelligence, it reduces oper operational costs at Bloomberg, for example, also at Cisco. Um, tremendous cost savings. Bloomberg estimates a 200% 200 th return on all their digitization activities around reducing waste and eliminating um, unnecessary costs. Digitization creates collaboration. It normalizes various generational differences, and it provides tremendous work-life flexibility. And I would counter Larry Prusak, who I know well and have worked with over the years, that learning does happen in a multiplicity, in a multimodal fashion. And digital learning and digital capabilities will only advance and increase over the next 5 to 20 years. So all of this is creating not only an urban fabric that is smart and hopefully more sustainable, but very soon, by 2020, and I have just a series of slides here, between 2015 and 2020, some of the predicted trends from McKinsey and others, by 2020, 80% of the world will have access to mobile telephony. Today in the emerging world, mobile telephony is outpacing running water and electricity two to one. People are, are accessing their mobile phones for commerce in the slums of Nairobi and Mumbai at, at a rate that is unprecedented. In addition to that, 60% of the world by 2020 will have internet access, PDA capabilities, which I'll, I'll share a bit. And so from a corporate perspective, the focus will be upon knowledge worker, productivity, innovation, collaboration, and effectiveness. Our good friends at McKinsey just released a report about two weeks ago. By 2015, 700 million more Asians, that's twice the population of the US, will start using the internet. In China, we will go from 385 million to 770 million, uh, almost a doubling. In India, from 80 million to almost 380 million. In Malaysia, a doubling, more than doubling, 15 to 25 million. The emerging markets will embrace technologies and will have the opportunity to accelerate and leapfrog uh, in an unparall unparalleled manner. So finally, I have a few slides on what does this really mean in terms of cities. Greg Lindsay, our good friend, who actually was a keynote at Cornet, for those of you who were there, talked about who will control the city of the future, the smart city. And companies like Cisco, IBM, ourselves, other technology firms are betting on the next 30 or 50 years that technology and urbanization and sustainable urbanization will really be the framework for entirely new business models. So just quickly, I'd like to highlight mobile broadband, smart personal devices, cloud, public technology interfaces, open data. And there are some huge societal implications to all of these advances, which also need to be recognized. In terms of mobile broadband, we're going to go from a fixed world to a mobile world, which we're already um, very much underway. Video communications will expand. The global north, global south will come together through huge undersea fiber grids. 100 Mbps wireless mobile broadband will be the norm. And we're going to see a huge network occur across the globe in terms of mobile, wireless, and connected communications. Smart personal devices. This is one of my favorite facts. Uh, in Bangalore, in January, a $35 tablet was introduced that has the full functionality, almost, of an Apple iPad. Uh, it's predicted by 2019 that smartphones will be about 4 to $5 a smartphone. Um, interactive video, most of the globe by 2020 will have access to inexpensive networks, inexpensive hardware, and low-cost connectivity. What will also accelerate this is the, the expansion of the cloud. Cloud computing is a centralization of computing. And governments in particular can access the cloud to reduce governmental cost, waste. Um, it will become pervasive. We will have huge data mining and public repositories in the cloud. 
and I know Rulena and Tom will speak a little bit about this as well, it will reduce the cost of public sector expenditure in a huge significant way. And the United Kingdom and elsewhere, the cloud is already in, in place. In the corporate sector, it's today $40 billion. It'll be $240 billion by 2020. These are examples of cloud uh, migration capabilities today. And I'm happy to share, you know, give me your cards. I have tons of research I'm happy to send you via email on these various uh, SaaS, PaaS, IS, and XS in terms of the IBM internal cloud where IBM colleagues around the world can share expertise. These interfaces will do something that's never been done in the history of the world. Poor and illiterate and handicapped people will have access to technology because the natural interfaces will no longer need keyboards. It, technology will become so ubiquitous and so such, such low cost, it'll be embedded into everything. So the illiterate, the elderly, the disabled, people with limited education will have full access and engagement with technology. And as a result, this access is going to create huge network, many-to-many -many networks, huge innovation capabilities. And by the way, this is all from the Institute of the Future and the Rockefeller Foundation study that was released in January. This will have huge implications of societal, um, if you will, wealth and societal benefit. In addition, we'll have open data infrastructure and huge open source capabilities as a result of these advancing technologies. So we'll start seeing four pro pro-poor innovation, and again, the slums of Nairobi and Mumbai and Sao Paulo. Poor people accessing technology will innovate and bring themselves out of poverty is one of the hopes and desires of this type of technology advancement. Micro networks, um, the ability for people to communicate through human interface in a ubiquitous way at a very low cost will change um, many of our societies. In fact, today, what's going on in the Middle East is an example of this. Access to Twitter, Facebook, iPhones, PDAs, changing the Middle East as we, as we sit here today. And finally, um, there'll be some huge societal and policy issues that will come about from these changes. Who will control all this technology? I mean, people are worried about near-field communications. I mean, I don't really care if Apple knows where I am all the time. A lot of people care. What if everything is known about you every second and you can not only monitor it, but you can record it, which some folks are already doing at MIT. Every moment of your life can be saved. Um, it's a thought, it's happening. Data control, public services, and the digital divides that will occur, the cities that are most advanced in these types of technologies will probably advance and be more competitive than other cities. And the question is, will we create even further haves and have-nots, perhaps, in this new um, advancement? And finally, pro-poor cities. You know, people take pity on people in slums and poverty conditions, but once you give people mobile telephony, and once you start giving them these technologies, they're able to create commerce. And there are those at the world, uh, well, many places who believe that, that this is a progression that we as a civilization are undergoing. And by 2020, that progression will be well underway in many regions of the world. So with that, you know, I'd just like to leave you that there's a tremendous amount of change coming our way, and it goes far beyond the workplace, far beyond corporate real estate, um, and the impact on a global level and on an individual level, we believe, will be just tremendous, with tremendous challenge. 